पंद्रह सौ प्रीलोडेड गानों वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा मोबाइल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे सो मेनी पीपल हैव सो मेनी ओपिनियंस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा सम पीपल टेल ही वॉज अ ग्रेट पॉलिटिशियन अ किंग और अ काउहर्ड बॉय or a magician a yogi some people also understand him as supreme personality of godhead others as manifestation of impersonal energy so what is the perfect opinion in this regard should be understood from arjuna who heard the glories of the lord from his lotus mouth himself so without getting confused with so many interpretations of bhagavad gita let us see what is arjuna's conclusion after hearing Gita. Without delay, let's get started with Chapter Ten, Opulence of the Absolute. This session is dedicated to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedant Swami Prabhupad, our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of the worldwide Hari Krishna movement. Let's see verse number one. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. भूय एव महाबाहो शृणु मे परम वच ये हम प्रियमाणाय वक्ष्या हित काम्यया द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड माय डियर फ्रेंड माय टी आम अर्जुना लिसन अगेन टू माय सुप्रीम वर्ड विच आई शैल इम्पार्ट टू यू फॉर योर बेनिफिट and which will give you great joy important word used in this verse is priyamanaya yatte ham priyamanaya because arjuna is very dear to krishna that is why this knowledge is being revealed to him in order to understand this knowledge this qualification repeatedly has been stressed by lord krishna भक्त वसी में सखा चेती अनसूयवे वन शुड बी नॉन एनवियस वन शुड बी डिवोटेड टू कृष्णा वन शुड बी फ्रेंडली टू कृष्णा सखा चेती प्रियमाणाय वन शुड बी वेरी वेरी डियर टू कृष्णा देन दिस नॉलेज विल बी रिवील्ड द क्वेश्चन नाउ कम्स हाउ टू बिकम डियर टू कृष्णा दैट ऑल्सो लॉर्ड कृष्णा हैज बीन मैंशनिंग अ डिवोटी इज वेरी डियर टू मी and that was a conclusion of previous chapter also man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya ji maam namaskuru this is most confidential knowledge become my devotee always think of me bhakta ativ me priya ha devotee is very dear to me but among all kinds of devotees there is this special devotee who is most dear to krishna nobody has been so dear nobody shall ever be so dear as this devotee who is this devotee so this is very great uh, secret this is explained at the end of bhagavad gita this confidential knowledge which we discussed in previous chapter krishna will repeat again and after that krishna says in 18th chapter ya imam paramam guhyam guhyam means confidential knowledge paramam top most confidential knowledge mad bhakteshu vidhasyati one who explains the secret of bhagavad gita to others to my devotees na cha tasmat manushyeshu kaschin me priya krit tamaha nobody is dearer to me than the one who explains this confidential knowledge to others bhavita na cha me tasman nobody has been nor shall anyone be ever more dear to me so the entire secret of understanding bhagavad gita is becoming dear to krishna and who is dear most to krishna one who preaches this knowledge to others so thus i request that let us realize this knowledge very nicely very carefully how to realize this also krishna will further explain very nicely in the coming verses 
सो लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड जन्म सार्थक करी कर परोपकार एंड लेट एस बी बिनेवलेंट एंड स्प्रेड दिस नॉलेज टू अदर्स बाई रियलाइजिंग एंड स्प्रेडिंग दिस नॉलेज वी बिकम मोस्ट डियर एंड आर स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ रीच एस न मे विदुस्सुगण प्रभव न महर्षय अहम आदि देवा महर्षीण चर्वश नीदर द होस्ट ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स नॉर द ग्रेट सेजेस नो माय ओरिजिन और इन एवरी रिस्पेक्ट आई एम द सोर्स ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स एंड द सेजेस द एंटायर सिविलाइजेशन हैज कम फ्रॉम demi gods the powerful controllers of the universe but krishna is telling na me vidu vidu means no na me they don't understand me surgana maharshi na the great sages and rishis who have given us such wonderful literatures in the form of upanishads puranas vedas so the great maharshis do not know and the devatas the supreme controllers of the universe they also do not understand me understanding krishna is so difficult aham adhi deva naam i am their source but they do not know that and what to speak of ordinary devatas the king of the devatas is lord indra the controller of rains he possesses the most powerful weapon vajra krishna will explain in this chapter indra also thought oh this is just an ordinary cowherd boy in vrindavan and people has stopped my worship so krishna wanted to as we have seen in bhagavad gita he has been telling people do not worship other devtas because the result is temporary just worship me for eternal return to the kingdom of god and thus krishna dissuaded the vijvasis from worshiping indra and when indra got to know he became infuriated this ordinary child and people i will just show them what is the result of not worshiping me and then he flooded the entire vrindavan and finally krishna lifted govardhan and indra came to his senses he is the source of my power he is supreme personality himself similarly brahma when aghasur the great snake demon was killed brahma also got bewildered people are telling that supreme lord has incarnated but without knowledge how can he incarnate he appears to be a small boy but yes his powers are mystical so let me test who is he the brahma also could not understand he kidnapped all the friends of krishna and the cows and calves of krishna and uh, finally he realized and brahma it is told very beautifully as we discussed previously so just for a moment as we have discussed brahma took them away and kept them in yog nidra in some far off place away from this planet and he had gone away just for a moment and when he came back he saw all those friends have come again now brahma got confused i have just kidnapped them how come they have all manifested again and it is being explained in the shastras that just it was one moment of time for brahma but in that one moment one year had passed on this planet earth as we understand in the relativity that if you travel at the speed of light and come back after 10 years other people who are living on this planet would have aged much more than you maybe 40 or 50 years and we can see how this is written 5000 years ago 5000 years ago people are witnessing this phenomena that just for a moment brahma lives on the topmost planet of the universe he goes away he comes back and then one year has passed on this planet so thus we can just uh, appreciate that these things are not imaginary phenomena before understanding relativity one might have had difficulty to understand but now we understand it is a scientific phenomena so brahma also could not understand and who is brahma brahma is the creator of this universe all the planets all the bodies that we have our destinies are created by brahma nobody is smarter more intelligent than brahma vedas have been given to us by brahma but brahma also could not understand thus it is told vedesh durlabha madurlabha atma bhakta this mind body everything has been created by krishna so if krishna wants we can know him if he doesn't want how can we know this instrument is under control of krishna only maya dhyakshena prakriti entire nature is under control of krishna 
So thus Krishna tells Name Vidu Surgana, here Arjun more confidential glories of mine, the Devtas and the Rishis also do not know me. But because you are my devotee, dear devotee, I am explaining this knowledge to you. So thus Brahma gave the process. What is our capacity when Brahma could not understand? So we should not try to understand God. So this logic in the Vedic philosophies compared to frogs in the well. Technically, it is called Kupumanduk Nyai, means frog in the well logic. A frog in the well, can you imagine how do cities look like? And uh, which are other species? There is a very huge animal, giraffe, there are elephants and tigers and so many other species are there. Frogs may have experienced a very limited species in the well and a very limited perspective of the world. They cannot imagine. Similarly, we are not even frogs in the well. We are just situated on this planet, which is but a speck of dust in the universe. What understanding do we have of the universe and what to speak of the creator of universe? So many universes. But the frog in the well cannot understand anything about the world. Similarly, we cannot expect to understand the world or the creator of the world. The only way is if the creator himself reveals this knowledge to us. So thus Brahma told, Jnane prayasa mudapasya namanta eva with folded hands he came and begged pardon. Krishna, please forgive me. I try to test you, my Supreme Lord. So then he gave the process, Jnane prayasa mudapasya. Give up this Jnan prayas using your mental speculation if you want to understand God. Jnane prayasa mudapasya. Please understand. If a dog tries his level best, can a dog understand trigonometry, algebra, calculus, quantum mechanics, optical physics? No, dog cannot understand. Dog's brain does not have the capacity. So why we are having blind faith? This is called blind faith on our brains that with this brain, I can understand everything of the world. So actually, this is called blind faith. I have blind faith on my brain. With this, I can understand everything. So Brahma is telling the wisest person, Jnane prayasam udapasya. Give up the mental effort to know God. And namanta eva, offer your respects to God, become very humble. You may not understand God, but you understand that God exists. That is a fact. Because I see these wonderful eyes are there. They are wonderful camera. And there is proper arrangement how to just focus on the retina. The curvature is so right from the birth. Did the atoms and the cells decide? Let us arrange in this curvature because there is a retina. Some cells are discussing to form the retina. And then there is shutter, there is cornea, pupil, how to control the intensity of light and so many wonderful mechanisms are there. And then there is some dust and then auto cleansing phenomena, dr drains are there and the dust is ejaculated. And then the image which is formed that is inverted in nature. There are optical nerves. There are encoders and decoders. So that image is inverted in the exact 180 degrees. So how somebody got to know that no image is going to be inverted? Let us uh, turn it 180 degrees. So this is a wonderful phenomena. These are cameras. Can a camera? Now we are recording this session in a camera. Can it manifest on its own? And these are the most wonderful cameras. Then the image is converted into an electrical signal. So there are encoders and then there are wires just like we have wire to send electrical signal. So we have wiring which carry electrical signals. It goes to the spine. From spine it goes to the brain. On a brain there is decoder. In this way we are able to visualize the world. There are rods and cones. They maintain perfect ratio so that we can see colors as it is. Such amazing phenomena is happening within our eye human and it is, we have not discussed anything. People spent so many years to just understand the mechanism of eye. We can understand somebody has created this wonderful machine. This wonderful supercomputer by which we can manufacture computers. Who has done this wonderful assembly of the gray cells here? So somebody is there, this we can understand. So I should simply bow down, become very humble. I am helpless. I have limited perspective of the world, which is allowed by my mind and senses. So Brahma is telling, Namanta eva, become humble. Jivanti san mukharitam bhavadiya vartam. 
Lead your life as per the direction of the self-realized souls. Sthane sita shuti gatam hi punsam tanu van mano bhi. So tanu, vak and mana, with mind, body and speech, one should completely surrender unto Krishna namanta eva. My God, please let me know. What is your instruction? Because he is supreme controller, he is our best well-wisher, we should surrender unto him. And ask him, what is best for me? How to attain real happiness? What is the truth of life? So this surrenderance, to the degree we execute it, in that proportion, knowledge is revealed. With mind, body and speech, we should surrender. And Shruti Gatam, simply keep on hearing. Ye prayaso ajit jitopi ta istri lokyam by this effort, the person who is prayaha ajita, who is almost unconquered, becomes conquered. By whom? By his devotees. Out of his great love, he agrees to be conquered. And his perfect understanding is revealed. So the perfect knowledge can be achieved when a person surrenders completely to the God and simply lends one's ears to understand this perfect knowledge from God or to the people who have realized this knowledge from God. Otherwise, Krishna has mentioned here, even the demigods and great rishis do not have knowledge about me. Yuma majam manadim cha veti loka maheshwaram asam mudas samartyeshu sarva papa if pramuchyate. He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme lord of all the worlds, he undeluded among men is freed from all sins. So we are not able to understand God because of sinful life. So doubts will remain as long as we are covered by the reactions of sinful activities. Now here Lord Krishna is telling, if anybody is able to understand, one is convinced that yes, he is anadim, Lord is beginningless, and he is ajam, he is not born. What is the meaning of not born? Because we are also not born, soul is eternal. Not born means Krishna does not undergo a phenomena of birth. It means when the soul picks up the dress, that is termed as birth. So Krishna is free from this phenomenon of taking dresses over him. It means when Krishna comes here, he does not take any external covering on himself. He is complete spirit inside and outside. There is no difference between body and soul of Krishna. Krishna does not take any body which is made up of matter. That is why he is ajam. He does not take birth. He becomes manifest. That is why technically it is called avir bhav. He manifests himself. He becomes visible. And then he becomes unmanifest, invisible. That's it. There is no birth and death for Krishna. So if one understands Krishna is ajam, Krishna does not take birth. And Krishna is Anadi, Krishna has no origin, He is the origin of everyone. He is freed from all sins. So there are nine steps to spiritual perfection. It starts with Adav Shraddha. Adav Shraddha means just like if you are hearing this Bhagavad Gita for the first time, then you might become little inquisitive. This sounds interesting, very logical, authoritative. Let me try to understand more. This is called Shraddha. Adav means the beginning is little Shraddha, little faith. Let me try to understand what this knowledge is. And with this little faith, when a person advances further, then he associates with the devotees. This is the second step that is called Sadhu Sangha. And then when one associates with the Sadhu, he eventually tries to follow the practices of sadhus, that is called bhajan kriya. One takes initiation from the spiritual master. Initiation means formal acceptance of spiritual master as one's guide. One surrenders unto such guru. And then he starts practicing devotional life. Only after initiation, initiation means the beginning. That is actually the beginning of spiritual life. Before that, it is all preparation. So the Sadhu Sangha association of devotees is very, very important to maintain always even after initiation. All our desires and convictions are simply because of the association that we have. And when a person starts executing devotional practices by being initiated from a bona fide spiritual master, 
he reaches fourth stage that is called anarth nivritti one becomes freed from all unwanted habits anartha artha means which makes sense anartha means nonsense anything which does not help us to become immortal to realize our spiritual position to gain platform of unlimited happiness that is called anartha in other words anything any effort done on material plane for material enjoyment more than keeping the body and soul together that is called anartha so all such anarthas unwanted habits especially sinful habits meat eating intoxication gambling illicit sex one becomes freed from these pillars and then one comes to the platform of nishtha nishtha means firm faith till then confusion will be there so this is right or wrong sometimes i think it is very right it is perfect sometimes i get confused this may be just uh, one of those theories that people have so this confusion will remain as long as a person is sick confusion will be there about the taste of food similarly as long as we are infested with sinful tendencies and activities clarity about spiritual life will not come so if we are not very disciplined we are not careful to avoid sinful activities then we will remain confused so this four stage is difficult to cross because we are habituated to breaking the regulative principles but by rigid following of bhajan kriya spiritual practices under the guidance of spiritual master one is able to cross over this stage and when one is freed from unwanted habits and drives then one becomes firmly established nishtha one can not only protect his faith and understanding one can even convince others and after nishtha comes ruchi ruchi means taste till then we have to practice as a matter of duty taste might not be there just like the small child it cries to go to school doesn't like to go and slowly when he becomes mature on his own he or she starts studying very nicely of course this is a crude example you don't get such taste in studies you're doing it for some results name fame money and some people yes do have research aptitude but uh, in krishna consciousness you start getting real taste unlimited taste and this ruchi when it is intensified it becomes asakti asakti means very strong attachment as people cannot start their day without tea or without cigarette people are addicted to so many things in a similar fashion a person gets addicted very strongly attached to spiritual practice one cannot do without executing spiritual life initially you have to force yourself because spiritual master is telling as a matter of duty i have to execute and then when the anarth nivritti we have crossed so we have to be patient we have to see am i still addicted to material enjoyment am i still sinful i am captured by unwanted habits then please be patient all the doubts will not be cleared now in this stage but a stage is there which is called nishtha firm faith and then ruchi then taste will come so we have to wait for that before that taste may come sometimes if we commit sinful activities taste will go away spiritual life will appear boring and burdensome also but when ruchi comes whenever you execute it there is taste as a healthy man eats nice food items there is taste and then asakti one becomes strongly attached to such practices cannot do without it and then one reaches the stage of bhava bhava means emotions then this attachment becomes so advanced that one starts feeling emotions as a young man and woman spontaneously they are attracted to each other mind gets captured in a similar fashion krishna's name form qualities features they capture the mind and the person starts feeling emotions for god and when the emotions are intensified that stage is called prema love of god and that is a perfection of one's life then a person is completely freed from the laws of nature then one's life is completely successful so these are the gradual stages of spiritual advancement so here krishna is telling sarva papai pramuchyate one only who is freed from all the sins can understand in fact that krishna is ajam krishna is anadim he is not taking birth and he is the origin of everybody all those who take births this clarity will come when we are freed from sins so we have to be patient it takes some time to get cleared of the sins buddhir gyanam sammoha shama satyam damashamaha 
सुखम दुखम भवो भावो भयम चा भयमे वचा अहिंसा समता तुष्टिस तपोदानम यशो यशः भवन्ति भावा भूतानाम मत्त एवा पृथक विधा इंटेलिजेंस नॉलेज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम डाउट एंड डिल्यूजन फगिवनेस ट्रुथफुलनेस सेल्फ कंट्रोल एंड कामनेस प्लेजर एंड पेन बर्थ डेथ फियर फियरलेसनेस नॉन वायलेंस एक्वनिमिटी सैटिस्फैक्शन ऑस्टेरिटी चैरिटी फेम एंड इनफेमी आर क्रिएटेड बाई मी अलोन कृष्णा इज मैंशनिंग हियर वी सी गुड क्वालिटीज एंड बैड क्वालिटीज एंड ही इज द सोर्स ऑफ बोथ इवन इज इंटेलिजेंट देन दिस इंटेलिजेंस इज बेस्टोर्ड बाई कृष्णा नॉलेज इफ समबडी इज हैविंग नॉलेज ना वॉट इज नॉलेज नॉलेज डज नॉट मीन वॉट वी परसीव एज रिकॉन्फिगरिंग द मैटर दैट इज टेकन एज शिल्प ज्ञान नॉलेज मीन्स द एबिलिटी टू डिस्क्रिमिनेट स्पिरिट फ्रॉम मैटर अदरवाइज इट इज कॉल्ड शिल्प ज्ञान वॉट इज शिल्प शिल्प मीन्स जस्ट लाइक ऑर्डनरी वर्क अमेजन इज देयर इज पुटिंग वन ब्रिक फ्रॉम हियर टू देयर और यू नो समबडी इज सिंपली कुकिंग द फूड दैट डज नॉट नीड ग्रेट डील ऑफ नॉलेज यू हैव टू मिक्स यू स्पाइसिस हियर एंड देयर Similarly, somebody can call himself very advanced technologist. What is that? That is also nothing. Simply putting some chip here and there, putting one electron from this orbit to another orbit, and that is called technology. It is simply reconfiguring the matter. It is an art, but it is not called knowledge. What is knowledge? Vedas define is as ability to distinguish spirit from matter. From there, the knowledge begins. Because this world is temporary, this happiness and distress is illusory. A person needs to be woken up from dream, and then the real life starts. Similarly, all this knowledge of this material world is but temporary. This is not called real knowledge. When a person understands I am spirit different from matter, that is called knowledge. The beginning of knowledge. Freedom from doubt and delusion. This is also created by Krishna. So because Krishna has created freedom from doubt and delusion. all the doubts will be cleared when krishna is pleased with the devotional service forgiveness this is very important and truthfulness if one needs to advance in spiritual life similarly self control and calmness nowadays nobody is taught these qualities one has to be self controlled people think the more i lose my control and joy in any whimsical way my mind suggests that will make me happy no that does not make me happy the more one is self control the more one will be satisfied more one will be calm and peaceful pleasure and pain this also we do not understand immediate pleasure is taken as pleasure but we have to understand sweet poison is not very good thing to consume even though it may appear sweet in the beginning in a similar fashion anything which is conducive for spiritual advancement should be considered as pleasure Sometimes getting up early in the morning and taking bath it may be troublesome but it should be executed fasting on certain days recommended in the vedas could be troublesome but one should tolerate hunger and execute such fasting even though such things appear to be pain we should understand that is actually pleasure because i am advancing in spiritual life i am treading the path of unlimited happiness on the other hand material enjoyment which is immediately very very pleasurable that is actually poison that is causing my repeated death this sense enjoyment is creating karma for me unlimited material desires and i am creating my entanglement i am creating many many deaths births old ages and diseases for myself so the so called enjoyment which people hanker after in this material world should be taken as pain if it is not for krishna consciousness of course in krishna consciousness as we discussed it is full of pleasure so sukham kartum avyayam you sing and dance for krishna singing and dancing is allowed you socialize on festivals and discuss about krishna that is allowed socializing is allowed you want to go on tours and trips that is allowed but go to see the places of krishna connected with krishna the holy places pilgrimages you want to eat nice dishes offer to krishna any that is allowed but any enjoyment in which krishna's pleasure is not involved 
such enjoyment should be taken as pain because it puts one into more illusion and misery in the long term birth death both are created by krishna fear fearlessness non violence equanimity satisfaction austerity so all these qualities are very very important now we do not understand non violence also properly what is non violence creating misery for anybody that is called violence now people think if i give people objects of material benefits parents are thinking oh let we were deprived of so many things in our childhood let us give whatever our children want and this is properly taking care bringing up children no it is not proper care this is actually violence you are making them addicted to sense objects and thus putting them straight on the path of repeated births and deaths had we given the right knowledge we would have taken them to immortality thus the scriptures are telling janani na sasyat pita na sasyat guru na sasyat bandhur na sasyat na yad mochyate samupeta mrityam one does not have right to become father mother spiritual master or relative if you cannot deliver your dependents from the clutches of death simply feeding children is not taking care of children animals also feed their young ones their cubs so simply feeding that is done by nature's arrangement parents are not having any special credit for it but credit is there for spiritual life so this is the duty proper taking care of children means stopping their death otherwise do not produce children this is against the laws of nature produce children only if you can take them to become immortal so thus this is very important this call real non violence equanimity a person should always remain equipoised one should not get elated in case of material happiness not get distressed in case of material distress satisfaction one should always remain satisfied with whatever is attained by the grace of lord as per our actions of previous life and save time for spiritual advancement austerity voluntarily accepting discomforts is important for purification of consciousness charity so it is enjoined in the vedas at least 50% of one's income should be spent for charity for welfare work for others this is the nature's way and we can see it as common sense the grains the fruits which the plants produce we consume them they don't consume it the woods produced by the trees we consume it similarly the strong person should use his strength to protect the weak intelligent men should use their intelligence to guide the people who are ignorant this is the way the nature has created this wonderful universe every person has some special ability with that one should help others who do not have that ability in this way there is perfect balance in the nature so those who are earning must give 50% of their charity if we want to abide by the laws of nature for welfare work and those who are wise they know which is the best welfare activity the best welfare activity is krishna consciousness other welfare activities they just pertain to body they are anyway being taken care by laws of nature but if we spread krishna consciousness we can save people from unlimited sufferings fame and infamy are created by me alone महर्षया सप्तपूर्व चारो मनवस्था मद्भावनसा जाता ये लोक इम प्रजा द सेवन ग्रेट सेजेस एंड बिफोर देम द फोर अदर ग्रेट सेजेस एंड द मनुज प्रो जेनेटर्स ऑफ मैन काइंड आर बॉर्न आउट ऑफ माई माइंड एंड ऑल क्रीचर्स इन दीज प्लैनेट्स डिसेंडेड फ्रॉम देम महर्षया सप्तपूर्व we would have heard of saptarishis if we are having little touch with the vedic knowledge there are seven great sages and there are their seven planets we see the constellation of seven planets like a big spoon in the sky so these great sages and accompanied by four other sages they are called chatusanas the four sons of brahma followed by 14 manus so these are the patriarchs of all of us human and non human species have descended from them so it is not that 
less intelligent beings evolved into more intelligent ones no but the most intelligent beings have created other intelligent and non intelligent beings etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tatvatah so vikalpena yogena yujyate natra sanshayah he who knows in truth this glory and power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service of this there is no doubt aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam budha bhava samanvita i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds everything emanates from me the wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts so here krishna is telling aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate everything spiritual or material is emanating from me and buddha those who are learned bhajante ma buddha bhava samanvita so this word is very important bhajante and bhava samanvita so some people tell bhajante or devotional service the path of bhakti is meant for people who are less intelligent they cannot follow the path of gyan but here very clearly krishna has told gyani takes many many births and bhakta quickly gets realized on this path of knowledge and thus bhajante bhajante he is telling the people most wise people buddha means most learned bhajante they engage in my service because i am the ultimate truth and how do they engage in my service bhavas samanvita with great as we have discussed there are various stages nine stages of spiritual perfection and eighth stage is called bhava feeling transcendental emotions for krishna so feeling transcendental emotions with great love those people who are wise they are worshiping me as aham sarvasya prabhu as the source of all the spiritual and material worlds so this is krishna the source of everything that we see around us and what we do not see as well मच्चित्ता मतगत प्राण बोधयंत परस्परम कथयंत माम नित्यम तुष्यंति चरमंति च द थॉट्स ऑफ माय प्योर डिवोटीज ड्वेल इन मी देयर लाइव्स आर सरेंडर टू मी एंड दे डिराइव ग्रेट सैटिस्फैक्शन एंड ब्लिस इन लाइटनिंग वन अनादर एंड कॉन्वर्सिंग अबाउट मी सो व्हाट आर द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द ग्रेट सोल्स हु हैव रियलाइज्ड एब्सोल्यूट ट्रुथ मत चित्ता मत गद प्राणा देयर लाइव्स आर सरेंडर्ड अन टू मी देयर कॉन्शियसनेस इज अब्सॉर्ब्ड इन मी एंड बोध यंता परस्परम म्यूचुअली दे आर डिस्कसिंग द नॉलेज ऑफ माइंड एंड माय ग्लोरीज सो दीस आर द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ परफेक्टली रियलाइज्ड सोल्स दे स्पेंड ऑल देयर टाइम जस्ट इन डिस्कसिंग टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू कृष्णा सो वन मे आस्क दैट हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट कृष्णा इज द सोर्स ऑफ एवरीथिंग मटेरियल एंड स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड्स because uh, we see that krishna appeared 5000 years ago but before that how to understand uh, some people tell vishnu incarnated as krishna so yes it is understanding that vishnu incarnated as krishna but the bhagavat school tells shrimad bhagavatam the conclusion of all the vedanta sutras ete chaanch kala punsam krishna stu bhagwan swayam various incarnations are listed rama adi murti shukalani mena tishtan nana avatara makarod bhuvaneshu kintu in brahma samhita also it is mentioned rama adi murti shukalani mena tishtan rama varaha adi etc so many incarnations are there but krishna swayam samabhavat param pumanyo krishna himself is the supreme personality of godhead same thing ved vyas after all we have not seen any incarnations all this knowledge we get from the vedas knowledge of lord shiva goddess durga uh, lord ganpati and everybody lord krishna vishnu so that is why if we have to reach some conclusion we have to ask ved vyas who has given us all this knowledge so maharshi ved vyas is writing after mentioning these incarnations in bhagavatam ete chaanch kala punsam all these other names forms he has mentioned 
इनकारनेशन ऑफ मत्स्या फिश लाइक इनकारनेशन टॉर्ट इज इनकारनेशन नरसिम्ह अवतार सो ए ते चांश कलाह पुनसाम दे आर अंशास और पोर्शन ऑफ द अंशास टू मीन्स बट कृष्णा भगवान स्वयं बट कृष्णा कृष्णाज नेम इज ऑल्सो लिस्टेड देयर बट कृष्णा इज नॉट एक्सपेंशन और वन अंशा वन फ्रैगमेंट कृष्णा इज भगवान स्वयं कृष्णा हिमसेल्फ इज द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड इट सो ऑल दो देर इज नो डिफरेंस ऑल दीज फॉर्म्स आर कृष्णा ओनली जस्ट टू रिलिश वेरियस प्लेजर्स एंड टू रेसिप्रोकेट द डिवोटीज हु वॉन्ट टू वर्शिप कृष्णा इन पर्टिकुलर फीचर कृष्णा टेक्स ऑल दीज फॉर्म्स इट इज ऑफेंसिव टू थिंक वन फॉर्म इज मोर पावरफुल अन अदर फॉर्म इज लेस नो दे आर ऑल इक्वली पावरफुल देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन वन फॉर्म एंड अन अदर फॉर्म ऑल दीज इनकारनेशन आर कृष्णा ओनली एंड द एग्जाम्पल इज गिवन इन ब्रह्म संहिता अगेन दीपार्चर ए वि दशांतरम अभ्युपेत्या दीपायते विव्रत हेतु समान धर्मा जस्ट लाइक दीपा लैंप इज देयर और कैंडल इज देयर फ्रॉम वन लैंप और कैंडल मैनी मैनी कैंडल्स कैन बी लिट एंड ऑल ऑफ देम विल हैव इक्वल इल्यूमिनेशन बट स्टिल दे इज वन ओरिजिनल कैंडल फ्रॉम विच अदर्स वर लिट एंड दैट ओरिजिनल कैंडल इट इज टोल्ड इज कृष्णा यस तादृग ए वि च विष्णु तया विभाति देर आर सो मेनी विष्णु फॉर्म्स थ्री विष्णु फॉर्म्स वी डिस्कस्ड इन कोर्स ऑफ आर डिस्कशन दे आर एग्जिस्टिंग इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड एंड इन स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड देर आर अनलिमिटेड विष्णु फॉर्म्स फोर हंड्रेड फॉर्म्स एंड ऑल दीज विष्णु फॉर्म्स इट इज बींग टोल्ड यस तादृग ए वि च विष्णु तया विभाति वन वू एक्सपैंड हिमसेल्फ इन मेनी मेनी विष्णु फॉर्म्स जस्ट लाइक फ्रॉम वन कैंडल मेनी कैंडल्स कैन बी लिट ऑल आर हैविंग इक्वली पावर that is the position of krishna he expands himself into many vishnu forms yasyai kanishvasita kalam athav lambya jeevanti lom vilaja jagandandanatha vishnur mahan sayayasya kala vishesho govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajami nishvasita kalam the period of exhalation is the life span of brahma brahma's life as we discussed in the 8th chapter is 311 trillion years more than that and this period of 311 trillion years is the time of one breath of lord mahavishnu from whose body so many universes are coming out and vishnu mahan sa iha yasya kala vishesho that mahavishnu is kala means expansion of whom govindam supreme lord krishna govinda adi purusham who is the origin of all persons the maham bhajami i worship that person brahma is telling so you can read uh, in the purport of this eighth verse very nicely from the atharva ved so some people tell please show me where in vedas krishna's name is there so many places this mantra that we chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so here krishna word comes krishna's name it is from krishna yajurved and here it is atharva ved yo brahmanam vidhati purvam यो वै वेदांश च गापयति स्म कृष्ण वेदांश गापयति स्म कृष्ण वनुगे वेदास टू ब्रह्म ही इज कृष्ण सो एक्चुअली दिस इज द रियल अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो वाई डू पीपल टेल दैट लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज कमिंग फ्रॉम विष्णु एंड नॉट वाइसे वर्षा बिकॉज एज वी हैव डिस्कस इफ यू हैव बीन फॉलोइंग अप वेरी क्लोजली द भगवदगीता सेशंस Lord Vishnu is present in this material universe and one of the three Vishnus the devatas approach when there is some disturbance here in this material universe and uh, he tells that yes i will come i will help and through that lord vishnu is called kshirodakshai vishnu all the manifestation all the incarnations they appear here and when lord krishna comes here lord balram when he comes they also come from kshirodakshai vishnu and you will hear description in the vedas that there are two hairs on the chest of lord vishnu one is black one is white and they incarnate as krishna and balram so one may think oh just see this is also in the vedas clear explanation is there from these hairs the incarnations have come and but here we understand that gapyati sma krishna krishna is explaining the knowledge to brahma and uh, from krishna mahavishnu is coming who is sustaining all the material universes so how do we understand this fact 
So the understanding is Krishna appears through Shirodakshai Vishnu, but he can appear directly as well, just like Narsim Dev incarnation. He appeared through pillar. There is no need of father and mother also. And sometimes he appears through father and mother, as in the case of Devaki and Vasudev. So Lord Krishna can appear from anywhere. Entire world is his energy. He can become visible anywhere. And he is visible anywhere and everywhere for pure devotees. And thus when Hiran Kashyapu asks Prahlad, you are always telling God, God, where is your God? He told he is everywhere. Because it is a fact, God is present in every atom, but non-devotees, materialists, we cannot see. So when uh, he told he is everywhere, he is in this pillar also, let me kill your God now, let me see. And just to keep the words of his pure devotee, Lord Krishna appeared as Narsingh Dev out of the pillar. So he can appear through pillar, he can appear through Deviki, or he can appear through Shirodakshai Vishnu. So pillar does not become father of Krishna, Devki does not become mother of Krishna. And Shirodakshai Vishnu does not become the source of Krishna. Krishna has chose to appear through various forms. In this way, the conclusive truth of Vedas is very very confidential. So one has to understand from proper Vedic references under the guidance of proper spiritual master. But there is no difference. Uh, Krishna, Vishnu, they are all same personality but still we have to understand who is the original personality and we have seen good amount of Vedic references and that is why it is told in the Vedas further Ram 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 Eti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasra Nama Tat Tulyam Ram Nama Varanane Lord Shiva is telling to Goddess Parvati Ram 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 Eti if you chant Ram 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 then this is equal to Sahasra Nama Tat Tulyam there are thousand names of Lord Vishnu. People chant Vishnu Sahasranam. So Lord Shiva is always chanting uh, Lord Ramchandra's name. He is instructing Mother Parvati, Varanane, O oh, Goddess who are having very beautiful face, chant Ram, Ram and Ram. This is equal to Sahasranam Tulyam. This is equal to chanting 1000 names of Lord Vishnu. And Trir Avritya to Yatphalam, by chanting three times Lord Rama's name, the same result is attained which a person can get by chanting once the name of Krishna. So this is the version of the Vedas. So it means by chanting one Krishna, one gets the result of chanting Ram, Ram, Ram and that is equal to chanting thousand times the name of Lord Vishnu. So in this way also we can understand how Krishna is the source of all other forms. And like this, the references are unlimited, but time is limited. Maybe in course of our other sessions, we will see more references. But here, this is very important and that we will see also in the next chapter. Krishna will show his four-handed form and then he will show his two-handed form. Telling this two-handed form, Devtas also cannot see. Because Devtas cannot go beyond the material universe. And four-handed form is visible in material universe, Lord Vishnu. And two-handed form of Lord Krishna, Goloka Eva Nivasati Akhilatma Bhuto that lives in spiritual world. Devtas are conditioned being like us. They don't have access to spiritual world. So thus all these wonderful uh, explanations we will discover more in course of time. For now we can understand Aham Sarvasya Prabhu Krishna is the source of everything. All the incarnations, all the expansions, all the material universes and the spiritual planets. Tesham Satat Yukta Naam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam Dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te Tesham satat yukta naam bhajatam preeti purvakam Dadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam upayanti te To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Machitta madagat prana bodhayanta parasparam Those who are always conversing about me, taking pleasure in my topics. And to those great souls who in this way are constantly engaged in my service. Tesham satat satat means always. Yuktanam who are always engaged in bhajatam. Bhajata means 
rendering service how preeti purvakam with great love the dami buddhi yogam tam so this buddhi yoga word we discussed in second chapter also this buddhi yoga means action in krishna consciousness that is the topmost intelligence when a person is most wise he understands krishna is aham sarvasya prabhu the source of everyone everything so all the action should be done for his pleasure now how to act on a step to step basis in the pleasure of krishna that lord krishna guides from the heart to the people who are always engaged in his service this is our only hope of spiritual advancement in this age of kali yuga if you want to understand god about reading all the vedas and books so even though it is possible by finishing such readings but it was possible in previous ages that too it takes a very very long time and people are having very long life and now our life span is very less and our memories are so poor today we read something and by the evening we'll forget so where is a question of proper analysis for proper analysis intelligence to work nicely we need to be shruti dhara shruti dhara means in vedic culture people were simply learning the disciples would simply hear once from the spiritual master and for the rest of the life the topics are committed to their memory they will never forget it so in this way just by once hearing they will be able to keep in the memory and thus they would be able to analyze the things very nicely now if you are always forgetting where is the question of applying proper logic today we discuss this we get convinced tomorrow we may get confused because we forget the logics the discussions so there is no hope of coming to proper conclusion of vedic knowledge by reading the vedas today because we forget the things so for people like us who are not shruti dharas not having perfect memory analysis will not work right so please do not get confused when we are not able to understand anything confusion is natural we keep on forgetting and by analysis even if a person is like brahma having perfect memory still brahma gets confused what to speak of us so thus this is the process this is the hope and that is satat yukta naam bhajatam priti purvakam always constantly one should engage in the service of krishna under the guidance of spiritual master then dadami buddhi yogam tam even though the person is very less intelligent as krishna mentioned in previous chapter pap yonaya people who are less intelligent less qualified if they take shelter of mind they can also attain the ultimate destination so it does not matter if we are less intelligent we have to simply engage constantly in the service of krishna and then dadami buddhi yogam tam i give him the buddhi yoga how to act in krishna consciousness in my service so that upayanti te at the end they can come to me so thus the life becomes very simple and there is a great secret krishna is telling the way to by analyzing we will understand what is the right course of action but step to step basis krishna is guiding us what can be better if god is guiding us what we have to do is just maintain constant engagement in the service of krishna and how we can do it so that is very simple as krishna has explained in the second chapter and after that third chapter fourth fifth chapter what we have to do is we have got certain skills and qualifications they have to be used in the service of krishna we have to work the way our mind and body uh work naturally find any convenient job business vocation and the results offered to krishna and meanwhile while we are engaged in that job we should always try to chant krishna's name and think of krishna and try to develop knowledge of krishna simply by following this process one is constantly engaged in the service of krishna and then the right knowledge from the heart is revealed तेषावाकंपाथम अहम अज्ञानज तम नाशयामी आत्मस्थ ज्ञानदीपेन भास्वता आउट ऑफ कंपैशन फॉर देम आई डिंग इन देर हार्ट्स डिस्ट्रॉय विद द शाइनिंग लैम्प ऑफ नॉलेज द डार्कनेस बॉर्न ऑफ इग्नोरेंस अहम अज्ञान जम तम द डार्कनेस विट इज अज्ञान जम बॉर्न ऑफ इग्नोरेंस i destroy because i am seated in the heart so krishna is very compassionate upon such devotees who are always glorifying him engaged in his service to such great souls thus it is very simple the subject matter is so nice so interesting bodhayanta parasparam 
find another person and keep on discussing this knowledge and engage always in service of krishna desham to such great souls krishna destroys nashyami atma bhavasto all the ignorance so when krishna wants to destroy ignorance then uh, where is the question of not getting enlightened krishna gives all knowledge so this is the easiest process rather than uh, waiting life after life to gradually develop your body and intelligence and understand krishna let us engage with whatever little intelligence and strength we have in his service and then he will guide step to step basis and he will destroy ignorance from the heart so usually we think unless we use discrimination we apply logic reasoning we cannot get proper knowledge but this is not correct we see all the species are having knowledge of maintaining themselves their young ones eating mating sleeping defending this knowledge is there for everybody how to create shelter how to defend themselves how to raise the young ones get arrange food store food all these things this knowledge is given so knowledge is given by krishna from the heart so without applying using our speculation simply if we engage in krishna service all knowledge will come without any extra need of analyzing and speculating with our imperfect brains but still one should not become lazy because uh, yes it is a fact simply if we chant if we hear satisfy somehow sir krishna all the knowledge will be revealed but in this age of widespread ignorance and agnosticism some person may come tomorrow and challenge our beliefs and we may get shaken up and leave our practices so thus it is important that we should not be lazy in understanding krishna so that very firmly we are established in krishna's service otherwise in good faith if a person takes up the process then success is assured but so that we don't get deviated off the path we need to cultivate knowledge of krishna also side by side arjuna uvacha param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam majam vibhum आहुस्वाम ऋषय सर्वे देवर्षिर्नारदस्तथा असि देवलो व्यास स्वयं च्रवीषि मे अर्जुन सेड यू आर द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म द अल्टिमेट द सुप्रीम अबोर्ड एंड प्यूरिफायर द एब्जोलो ट्रुथ एंड द इटर्नल डिवाइन पर्सन यू आर द प्राइमल गॉड ट्रांसेंडेंटल एंड ओरिजिनल एंड you are the unborn and all pervading beauty all the great sages such as narada asita devala and vyasa proclaim this of you and now you yourself are declaring it to me so this is the conclusion of arjuna after hearing bhagavad gita so far what is that param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavan we are all brahma aham brahmasmi tatvamasi you are that we have heard this sufficiently but krishna is param brahma this special word is used for krishna so we are infinitesimal atomic sparks brahm spark of brahm and krishna is param brahm infinite brahm he is the source of all infinitesimal brahms all the living entities so krishna is supreme infinite spirit param brahma param dhama and we have discussed sufficiently everything in material and spiritual world is resting on krishna so krishna is supreme abode everything is resting on him his energy param das he is called param dhama the supreme abode pavitram paramam bhavan he is supremely pure if anybody comes in contact with krishna they become purified immediately even the demons when they are killed by krishna they become liberated immediately so all the problems in life are because of impurities lust anger greed so when we maintain constant contact with krishna especially in kali yuga such contact can be maintained by chanting his name kali kale naam roope krishna avatar naam naam akari bahudha nij sarv shakti krishna has taken incarnation in the form of his name all the potencies of krishna are invested in the name so by always chanting and hearing the name of krishna which is very easy to do one is in constant touch with krishna is supremely pure just like an iron rod in constant touch with fire becomes fire like starts emitting heat and light 
our entire mind and body becomes purified of material dirt and it becomes spirit like starts behaving like spirit as iron rod starts behaving like fire and when the mind and body start behaving like spirit we can experience our spiritual nature bliss uh, eternal life and unlimited happiness and the laws of the nature surroundings don't impact us so pavitram krishna is supreme purifier paramam bhava pavitram paramam bhavan yourself purusham shashvatam divyam you are purush but you are not purush like us who take birth and die you are shashvat shashvat means eternal so arjuna is perfect student of bhagavad gita we should take his conclusion arjuna is concluding you are eternal person you are not an energy you are eternally a person always you are a person and you will always remain a person purusham shashvatam you have never taken birth you will never die purusham shashvatam divyam how is it possible we see persons take birth and they die no because you are divyam you are spiritual on spiritual platform it is possible and adi devam you are the not any other devata you are adi devam the origin of all the devatas ajam vibhum again the word is used ajam so many times krishna has told i am ajam arjuna is also telling ajam ajam means one who does not take birth does not accept bodies so krishna does not accept body he is not accepted a body sitting in the womb of devaki krishna is always like that in that form that is spiritual form of krishna which appears like matter so that we can see him ahustvam rishaya sarve devarshir naradas tatha and all the great sages rishaya sarve devrishi narad asito devalo vyaso these are great vedic authorities asit and deval are less known if you have uh, uh, if you are not into the vedic knowledge but everybody definitely knows ved vyas the author of mahabharata shrimad bhagavatam compiler of all the vedas so arjuna is quoting not because i am your friend so i am doing flattery to you oh you are unborn you are god just like friends may sometimes speak of each other you know so do not think it is a friendly glory but all the great sages speak such of you that you are param brahma param dharma and swayam chay bravishi me you yourself mercifully have declared spoken the same knowledge to me so all the great sages authorities of absolute truth they tell krishna is the origin of everything krishna is the original person param brahma param dhama he is infinite spirit source of everything he is eternally a person and arjuna the perfect student of bhagavad gita has come to the same conclusion krishna is also telling the same thing i am god then why we are uh, spending time uselessly all the authorities have told krishna has declared this bhagavad gita has been accepted as authority by every uh, authorized sage so if you want to save time we can accept it and start practicing this very nice process which is mentioned here of buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga and there is no loss chant the name of krishna engage in service of krishna सर्वेतृतम मे यन्मा वदसी केशव न हि ते भगवन्क्ति विदुर्देव न दानवा ओ कृष्ण आई टोटली एक्सेप्ट एस ट्रुथ ऑल दैट यू हैव टोल्ड मी नीदर द गॉड्स नॉट डीमन्स ओ लॉर्ड नो दाय पर्सनैलिटी अर्जुना इज एक्सेप्टेड एवरी थिंग दैट कृष्णा टोल्ड बिकॉज अदर अथॉरिटीज हैव स्पोकन ऑफ द सेम थिंग अबाउट कृष्णा एंड nobody knows you vidur devana danava the devs do not know you the gods and the demons also do not know you only a person who is a devotee can know you perfectly swayam evatmanatmanam vetthatvam purushottama bhut bhavana bhutesha dev deva jagatpate Indeed you alone know yourself by your own potencies origin of all lord of all beings god of gods o supreme person lord of the universe vaktum arhasya sheshena divya hi atma vibhutayah ya bhir vibhuti bhir lokan imastvam vyapya tishthasi please tell me in detail of your divine powers by which 
you pervade all these worlds and abide in them katham vidyam aham yogin stvam sada parichintayan keshu keshu cha bhaveshu chintyosi bhagavan maya how should i meditate on you in what various forms are you to be contemplated o blessed lord विस्तरेणात्मनो योगम विभूति च जनार्दन भूय कथय तृप्ति ऋणवतो नास्ति मे मृत टेल मी अगेन इन डिटेल ओ जनार्दन कृष्णा ऑफ योर माइटी पोटेंसीज एंड ग्लोरीज फॉर आई नेवर टायर ऑफ हियरिंग योर एम्ब्रोजल वर्ड्स As it has been concluded here, मत चित्ता मत गत प्राणा बोध अयंत परस्परम मन मना भव मत भक्तो मई आसक्त मनो ये माम स्टडी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द माइंड ऑन कृष्णा इज वॉट इज बींग प्रेस्क्राइब हियर एज द अल्टीमेट नॉलेज नाव अर्जुना नोज कृष्णा एज अ सुप्रीम पर्सन बट ऑर्डिनरी पीपल कैन नॉट नो हि स्पिरिचुअल फॉर्म सो ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन्स हु आर captured by material energy how can they always think of krishna because they are enamored by the material opulences so how krishna has manifested himself in the material world arjuna is telling krishna to kindly explain so that ordinary people advanced people directly preman jana charita bhakti vilochane na santas sadai vridayeshu vilokayanti those who are in love of god always they are seeing the form of god within their hearts krishna becomes visible to them out of his mercy but ordinary people cannot practice such meditation so what ordinary person can do for the sake of poor people like us arjuna is putting forth this question how can an ordinary person meditate on you think of you o krishna please explain your glories shri bhagavan vacha हंत ते कथयिष्या दिव्या आत्म विभूत प्राधान्यत कुरुश्रेष्ठ नास्तो विस्तर से मे द ब्लेसड लॉर्ड सेड यस आई विल टेल यू ऑफ माई स्प्लेंडरस मैनिफेस्टेशन बट ओनली ऑफ दोज विच आर प्रोमिनेंट ओ अर्जुना फॉर माई ऑप्यूलेंस इज लिमिटलेस so everything is krishna's opulence what we see around us but the prominent opulence is krishna is now going to explain aham atma guda kesha sarvabhuta shaya sthitah aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha i am the self o guda kesha seated in the hearts I am the self o guda kesha seated in the hearts of all creatures I am the beginning the middle and the end of all beings Aditya naam aham vishnu jyotisham raviranshuman marichir marutam asmi nakshatranam aham shashi of the adityas i am vishnu of lights i am the radiant sun i am marichi of the maruts and among the stars i am the moon so these are glorious manifestations there are dwadash aditya 12 aditya demigods sons of aditi among them lord vishnu is the supreme of lights i am the radiant sun and sun as we know is very we all see sun as very effulgent as soon as you see this glorious manifestation so effulgent one should understand this is krishna krishna's manifestation i am marichi of the maruts maruts are the demigods who control the heavenly spaces winds and marichi is the most prominent among them he is also manifestation of krishna and among the stars i am the moon krishna is telling moon is the most illuminating among the stars nakshatras and krishna is telling as soon as you see moon you should remember who oh, this moon is also manifestation of krishna's energy vedanam sam vedosmi 
देवानामस्मी वासव इंद्रियाण मनश्चास्मी भूतानामस्मी चेतना ऑफ द वेदास आई एम द साम वेद ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स आई एम इंद्रा ऑफ द सेंसेस आई एम द माइंड एंड इन लिविंग बींग्स आई एम द लिविंग फोर्स रुद्राण शंकरश्चास्मी वित्तेशो यक्ष रक्षसाम वसूना पावकश्चास्मी मेरुशिखरिणाम हम ऑफ ऑल द रुद्रास आई एम लॉर्ड शिवा ऑफ द यक्षास एंड राक्षसास आई एम द लॉर्ड ऑफ वेल्थ कुबेरा ऑफ द वसूस आई एम फायर अग्नि एंड ऑफ द माउंटेन्स आई एम मेरु so this discussion is not of this planet but of the manifestations of the entire universe so there are 11 rudras of the 11 rudras lord shiva is the top most rudra most prominent of the yakshas and rakshasas i am the lord of wealth kuvera kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods of the vasus i am fire vasus they are another category of demigods and agni is most powerful and prominent among them krishna is telling that is also my manifestation and there are so many mountains and the tallest mountain is mount meru krishna is telling that is also my manifestation purodasam cha mukhyam mam vidhi partha brihaspatim senani nam aham skandah sarasam asmi sagarah of priests o arjuna no me to be the chief brihaspati the lord of devotion of generals i am skanda the lord of war and of bodies of water i am the ocean maharshi nam bhrigoraham giram asmi ekam aksharam yagyanam jap yagyo asmi sthavaranam himalayah of the great sages i am bhrigu of vibrations i am the transcendental om of sacrifices i am the chanting of the holy names japa and of immovable things i am the himalayas now when we read this description i am i am i am ocean i am himalaya i am moon so one should not think if a person does not have proper understanding one may think krishna is energy or the material energy these are manifestations of matter moon himalayas water but then krishna is telling i am person also i am bhrigu i am sun so some people think that some total of everything that is there in the universe that is krishna krishna is not a person ultimately krishna wants to tell everything that you see around you that is krishna so this is not the proper understanding proper understanding because krishna at the same time arjuna has concluded you are purusham you are a person shashvatam divyam you are always a person so krishna cannot be matter which is spread everywhere when krishna tells i am ocean himalayas and etc it means achindya bheda bhed as we have been discussing there is no difference between energy and energetic at the same time there is difference sun and sunlight are one unit because there is no separate existence of sunlight without sun or sun is existing without its light it's not possible so thus they can be said as one at the same time we cannot tell that sunlight is exactly same as sun so when krishna is telling this is me it means this is my energy in that sense krishna is telling so all these are manifestation of krishna's energy just like the leaves the twigs the branches are all tree but still tree is tree it is the complete whole so this is the way in which we are supposed to take this explanation it is me means it is my energy because energy is not different from me so very important word used here is yagya naam jap yagyo asmi there are so many yagyas there is yagya of dravya which means offering grains into the fire sacrifice or giving charity of material goods that is called dravya yagya there is gyan yagya when somebody reads the vedas that is also sacrifice of one's intelligence one's time energy it takes lot of effort so that is also sacrifice and following brahmacharya that is also sacrifice 
In this way, so many sacrifices are recommended in the Vedas. But among all the yagyas, so these yagyas, as we have discussed enough, are not just required for spiritual advancement, but also for maintaining a comfortable material life, for getting the natural resources, yagya is required. So of so many yagyas which Krishna has described, the most powerful yagya is japa yagya, chanting the holy names of the Lord. So thus, uh, what the process we are following, it is highly recommended in all the Vedas in Bhagavad Gita also. So we remember in 9th chapter, verse number 14, Krishna mentioned, Satatam Kirtayantumam, always keep on chanting my name. Here Krishna is telling, Yagya Nam, I am the chanting of the holy name. So chanting of the names is being given so much stress. So thus we should follow this chanting always, Satatam, throughout the day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. There will be no material scarcity and we will make perfect spiritual advancement. This Japa is the topmost Yajna. More than reading the Vedas, more than Tapasya, more than following Vrata, standing in neck deep cold water, more than doing 7 day, 10 day, 1 month of fasting, more than anything else, simply chanting the holy names. Greatest Yajna. Ashvatha Sarva Vrikshanam Devarshinam cha Naradah Gandharvanam Chitra Rathah Siddhanam Kapilo Munih Of all the trees, I am the holy fig tree, and amongst sages and demigods, I am Narada. Of the singers of the god, Gandharvas, I am Chitra Ratha, and among perfected beings, I am the sage Kapila. Uchayashavasam Ashwanam Vidhi Mamam Ritod Bhavam Airavatam Gajendranam Naranam Cha Naradhipam Of horses know me to be Uchay Shrava, who rose out of the ocean, born of the elixir of immortality. Of lordly elephants, I am Airavat, and among men, I am the Monar. So these descriptions are given of various famous personalities or animals in the universe. So it might take a lot of time if we described every personality, the great sage Bhrigu, the most powerful sons of Brahma, who went and kicked Lord Vishnu on his chest. That is why those who make deities, they have this footprint on Lord Krishna's chest. So that impression is of Lord Bhrigu's feet. He is very, very powerful sage. But time is very less and anyway, we don't see these personalities as other powerful personalities uh, they can witness. But anyway, we have seen monarch. It is described here. So whenever we see king or prime minister or powerful rulers, we can immediately think of Krishna. That Krishna has invested their potency in them. That is why they have rose to such power. So in this way, we should always try to think of Krishna. So as far as Eravat and Uchayashrava are concerned, they came out of the churning of ocean of milk. We know Lord Shiva, he drank poison and nectar was given to the demigods. In that churning, one horse also came out and elephant also came out. So these are their names, Uchayashrava and Eravat. So if time permits, we will discuss sometimes about all these great personalities, Lord Kapila, who is uh, incarnation of Krishna himself, who explains Sankhya Yoga to his mother Devahuti and uh, Devarshi Narad, we all know. He is the incarnation of Bhakti potency of Lord Krishna. He is a spiritual master of entire universe and that of sage Vedivyas also. Ayudhanam aham vajram dhenu namasmi kamadhuk rajanashchasmi kandarpaha Sarpanamasmi Vasukihi. Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Among cows, I am the Surabhi, givers of abundant milk. Of procreators, I am Kandarpa, the god of love. And of the serpents, I am Vasuki, the chief. Anantaschasmi Naganam, Varuno Yadasamaham. Pitranam Aryamachasmi Yamasayamatamaham Of the celestial Naga snakes, I am Ananta, of the aquatic deities. 
I am Varuna. Of departed ancestors, I am Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, Lord of Death. Prahaladaschasmi daityanam kalah kalayatamaham Mrigaanam cha mragendroham vainate yascha pakshina Among the daitya demons, I am the devoted Prahalad. Among the subduers, I am time. Among the beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuna, the feathered carrier of Vishnu. Pavana pavatamasmi Rama shastra bhritamaham Jhashana makarashchasmi Rotasamasmi jahnavi Of purifiers, I am the wind. Of the wielders of weapons, I am Ram. Of fishes, I am the shark, and of flowing rivers, I am the Ganges. Sargana madirantascha madhyam chaivaha marjuna adhyatma vidya vidyanam vada pravadatamaham. Of all creations, I am the beginning and the end, and also the middle. O Arjuna, of all sciences, I am the spiritual science of the self, and among logicians, I am the conclusive truth. Aksharana makarosmi dvanvasamasi kasya cha aham evakshaya kalo dhataham vishvato mukha. Of letters, I am the letter A, and among compounds, I am the dual word. I am also inexhaustible time, and of creators I am Brahma, whose manifold faces turn everywhere. Mrityu sarvaharashchaham udbhavascha bhavishyatam Eti shrirvakcha narinam smritir medhadritikshama I am all devouring death. And I am the generator of all things yet to be. Among women, I am fame, fortune, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness, and patience. So death is an established truth. Nobody can avoid death. So when we see death happening, we should understand this is also the energy of Krishna, arrangement of Krishna. And these are the feminine qualities, fame, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness, patience. Any woman becomes glorious by having one or more of these qualities. So when we see such qualities, then we should understand this is also Krishna, manifestation of Krishna's energy. Brihasam tatha samnam gayatri chandasamaham masanam margashirshoham Ritu naam kusuma karaha. Of him I am the Brihat Sam, sung to the Lord Indra, and of the poetry I am the Gayatri verse, sung daily by the Brahmanas. Of months I am November and December, and of seasons I am flower bearing spring. So, Gayatri verse is the topmost verse of the Vedic literature. And it is meant to be chanted by advanced souls, either Brahmanas, Brahmana means Brahma Jana Atiti Brahmana, who has realized that he is not the body but spirit soul. So such Brahmanas can chant Gayatri or the Devtas who are very sattvic in heavenly bodies. So these days we see many people, they just read Gayatri Mantra and start chanting, but it will not be effective. Gayatri Mantra has to be chanted by proper qualification, Satyam, Shama, Dhamma. Mind should be perfectly controlled, senses should be controlled. Truthfulness, forgiveness, jnanam, vijnana, mastikyam, the knowledge of self different from matter, self realization. One should be very, very advanced in these qualities. And then one can chant Gayatri and make advancement. So, because people are not very sattvic in Kali Yuga, it's very difficult to find Brahmana. That is why this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is given. So it more than compensates Gayatri. It does not matter if we cannot take benefit of chanting Gayatri. 
Hare Krishna Mahamantra will give all the results that are attainable by chanting Gayatri. There is no difference between the two, chanting Gayatri or Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But Hare Krishna Mahamantra is very merciful incarnation which even the least qualified people can also chant and make perfect advancement. Masana Marg Shirshoham, November, December are considered the best because people harvest their crops in this season. And of course, we know the spring is uh, very, very nice. It's very pleasant condition. So when we see such pleasant conditions, such seasons, because uh, these things, they easily captivate one's mind and attention. Oh yes, it is very nice month. We will collect grains now. Oh, it is very nice weather. So, so amazing. So we can immediately remember, oh, this is also creation of Krishna. Dyutam chalaya tamasmi Tejas Tejasvi Namaham Jayosmi Vyavasayosmi Satvam Satvavatamaham I am also the gambling of cheats and of the splendid. I am the splendor. I am victory. I am adventure. And I am the strength of the strong. Vrishni Nam Vasudevosmi Pandavanam Dhananjayaha Muni Nam Apyaham Vyasaha Kavi Nam Ushana Kavihi Of the descendants of Vrishni, I am Vasudev, and of the Pandavas, I am Arjuna. Of the sages, I am Vyas, and among great thinkers, I am Ushana. Ushana, the great thinker here, is the spiritual master of the demons. He was very, very wise person, and thus he is also a representation of Krishna's energy. Dando Damayatamasmi Nitirasmi Jigishatam Maunam Chaivasmi Guhyanam Gyanam Gyanavatamaham Among punishments, I am the rod of chastisement, and of those who seek victory, I am morality. Of secret things, I am silence, and of the wise, I am wisdom. Yachapi Sarva Bhutanam Bijam Tadaham Arjuna Natadasti Vinayatsyan Maya Bhutam Characharam Furthermore, O Arjuna, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being, moving or unmoving, that can exist without me. So we see trees, trees are bearing fruits, fruits are again having seeds and from that seed again comes a tree. How did this all start? It all started from the seed. So who gave the original seed of all the species of life, plants, trees, crops and that in the embryo for the development of human beings? So Krishna is telling, I am the seed of all the existences. So any wonderful manifestation we see around us and we wonder about the origin from where came the original seed? So Krishna is telling, I am the original seed. Nantosti mama divya naam vibhuti naam parantapa esha tuddesha tavprokto vibhutir vistaro maya O mighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. Yad yad vibhuti masatvam Srimad urjitam evava Tat tad evava gachatvam Mamate jonsha sambhavam Know that all beautiful, glorious and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. So even though we cannot conceive of Krishna's spiritual form in our heart always, Krishna is telling any beautiful thing you see around you, any mighty thing that you notice around you, it is manifestation of my splendor. So tomorrow if we find some beautiful flower around us, we should think, oh, this is also Krishna's energy. Krishna is a wonderful creator. If we see any beautiful man, woman, any educated, very erudite man or woman scholars, we should understand oh, this is also manifestation. Their brain, mind has been designed by Krishna. Otherwise, nobody could have been so learned. We see any nice composition of poetry, we should understand this is Krishna's manifestation. 
any nice technology we get enamored oh this is also krishna's intelligence how krishna has created all these wonderful phenomena so anything beautiful splendorous we should immediately think of krishna so in this way indirectly if we start thinking of krishna one day we will reach sufficient purification by which we can directly think of krishna अथवा बहु नयते न किं ज्ञाते न तव अर्जुन विष्टभ्यादम कृष्ण एकांशे न स्थित जगत बट वॉट नीड इज देर अर्जुन फॉर ऑल दिस डीटेल्ड नॉलेज विथ अ सिंगल फ्रैगमेंट ऑफ माई सेल्फ आई परवेड एंड सपोर्ट दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स सो कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अर्जुन why you are asking what is the need of all this detail just like we have a car we need not understand all the details intricacies of car manufacturing we need to know how to use the car to reach our destination our goal in a similar fashion this world is very very complex unlimitedly complex one cell is more complex than a metropolitan city in its rush hour so one cell we cannot understand how somebody has installed developed a city in such a small unit called cell and self replicating city can one city in new york produce another new york same building same houses same offices same traffic same water same gas same everything it is impossible but that is cell self replicating city what is this arrangement so many cities are required they make up this wonderful complex machines our bodies So Krishna is telling, what is the need, Arjuna, of all these things? You have to think of me and just understand this entire material manifestation. Mam tejo ansha samhavan. Ansha ha ansha means from one fragment of mine, entire universe is pervaded and sustained, and that is Paramatma manifestation. Lord Krishna, in the form of Paramatma, undan tarastha paramano chayan tarastham Govinda Madhi Purusham tamaham bajami. He has entered into Anda Brahmanda, the supreme egg universe, and Paramanu. He has entered within the atom also. So every atom is able to maintain its integrity, its form, structure, because Paramatma is there present inside. So all the body's units are sustaining because Paramatma is sitting in every body. So thus, with one fragment, Krishna is telling entire material world is pervaded and is sustained. So one fragment of mine is so powerful. So there is no end to my glory, Arjuna. So there is no need of such detailed explanations. Just think of me and become my devotee. So these are some introductory opulences of Krishna. These opulences are meant so that we can increase our affection on Krishna. and thus when we understand the glories of any person automatically we like to discuss about that person we want to meet that person and establish relationship with that person so if we get convinced about the glories and opulences of krishna it will be very easy to become devotees of krishna which is the purpose of explaining all these opulences and now the next chapter universal form a very unique vision is given to arjuna where he is able to see entire universe including past present and future sitting in one place how was that manifested we will see in the next chapter thank you so much for hearing please keep on chanting always hari krishna